wanted to do a quick video of my head for the last five minutes and show you what's on us. So right here is Jabal Roma, which is known as the Mountain of the Archers. The Prophet had an army of a thousand against an army of three thousand. Three hundred of that one thousand turned away the rousing of the hypocrites. So he was left with 700. He stationed 50 of those 700 here on this mountain, and he told them, do not leave your spots no matter what you see, whether it's clear victory or clear defeat. They were stationed under a man who was known to be very obedient of the Prophet Abdullah ibn Jubayr And so when the battle took place and it seemed like victory had already been attained, 40 of the 50 came running down from this mountain to uh, collect the spoils. Abdullah ibn Jubayr radiallahu anhu and 10 of the companions stayed on the mountain and they were eventually martyred. On this side you have Uhud. And this is just the tip of Uhud. Uhud spans the entirety of where I'm showing you with this camera. So Uhud spans the, basically encircles the entire area uh, of the, the battlefield. Now, subhanAllah, some of the uh, scholars say Badr is where they learned La ilaha illallah or truly lived it in the most pure of ways and here is where they learned Muhammad Rasulullah. When the battle uh, seemed to be over, the Muslims attained victory. Khalid at that time he was not Muslim, took his army around the hut. And because the archers had come down, he was able to ambush the Muslims here in the battlefield. And in the process of that, um, you had 70 or so of the companions fall. In this, 65 of them were Ansar, who did not flee from the Prophet. It shows you the spirit of the Ansar and the love that they had for the Messenger. The Prophet was attacked from every direction. A man by the name of Ibn Qami'ah uh, was the one who really uh, made the most ambitious attempt on the Messenger. Mus'ab Mus'ab ibn Umayr who brought the son to Medina at the order of the Prophet Mus'ab who looked like the Prophet so he created some commotion and he attracted the army to him to attract attention away from the Prophet and Ibn Qami'ah killed him Mus'ab fell on that day and subhanAllah he came here with the message of Islam and he died for Islam here in this very spot. Hamza radiallahu anhu, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was pursued by Wahshi uh, with a spear and he fell radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well. Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu anhu, the first Amir in Islam who made the migration to Abyssinia and then came to Medina. Uh, Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu was also the brother-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Later on, uh, the Prophet ﷺ married Zainab bin Jahsh and he was the brother-in-law of Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu who was married to Hanna bint Jahsh. Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anhu also falls here in the battlefield. So Mus'ab, Hamza and Abdullah ibn Jahsh fell and they are buried in this first grave over here. The rest of the shuhada, they were people that came to the aid of the Prophet ﷺ. Some of them, subhanAllah, were like shuhada that they did not die, like Talha radiallahu anhu. Talha ibn Ubaidullah, who literally was catching spears and whose hand was paralyzed and suffered all sorts of wounds on his body and was known as the walking martyr and you had uh, also Nusayba bint Ka'b who was trying to defend the Prophet Umm Ammar Nusayba Umm Ammar and the Prophet said I looked in every direction on the day of Uhud and I saw Nusayba and she was struck so harshly by Ibn Qami'ah on her shoulder that it took her a year to recover as well as the multiple wounds on her body. You had Yazid ibn al-Sakan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sa'ad ibn al-Rabi' radiallahu anhu, Amr ibn al-Jamuh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you know, he was known to have a limp and the Prophet sallallahu said, I saw him in Jannah and he had no limp. You had Hanbala radiallahu anhu, Ghasil al-Malaika, who was bathed by the angels. He is buried here as well. All these people who ran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Anas ibn Malik's uncle radiallahu anhu, Anas ibn al-Madr, Anhu, who ran towards the battlefield and he said, I can smell the smell of Jannah. And he fell here as well. Anhu. So in this first grave you have Mus'ab, Hamza, and Abdullah ibn Jahsh, and then the grave that is further away. You 
you have the rest of the Shahada, the Prophet ﷺ buried them two by two in accordance with their hifth of the Qur'an, how much of the Qur'an they memorized. They were buried first up until the last of them. But they are all some of the most noble people. <inaudible> From the believers are those who were truthful, the promise that they made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A few other notes about Uhud. Uh, number one, the Prophet ﷺ made it a sunnah to come and visit the Shuhada of Uhud and make dua for them. His last trip outside of Medina before he passed away was to come to Uhud as he would and to seek forgiveness for him. These people who died protecting him وسلم, in the process, protecting Islam. And then he visited Al-Baqir and then the Prophet وسلم, obviously spent the rest of his days in his home until he passed away. When the Prophet وسلم, was here and they took him up to Uhud uh, you know, to take him away from the hardship of that day, the Prophet ﷺ was making the dua, Allahumma khfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Even as they had taken out his teeth, even as they had driven the armor into his face and struck him and tried to kill him وسلم, and almost succeeded, he was still saying, Allahumma khfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, forgive my people. They don't know any better. And subhanAllah, he had in his midst already some of the most incredible companions. Abu Ubaidah the Jarrah, the Amin of this Ummah who literally pulled with his teeth the helmet of the Prophet out of his face and had a lisp for the rest of his life because of that. And Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah be pleased with them who are with the Prophet And Abu Sufyan called out to them as they retreated into Uhud. And he said, a day for a day. And the Prophet said to Umar to answer that our dead are in paradise and your dead are in the hellfire. And then he said, May Hubal be elevated. And the Prophet said, Allahu Ajal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater and higher. And Allahu Mawlana, Wala Mawla Lakum. Allah is our protector and you have no protector. Still, the Prophet said, And some of them went on to become Muslims who would in fact spread uh, the message of Islam throughout the world because of the Prophet Sallallahu hope for them. This is the place, dear brothers and sisters, where, uh, subhanAllah, you know, they literally are, as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, people who are truthful to the covenant they took with Allah. And when we come to Medina and we enjoy its blessings, they enjoy the blessings of the afterlife because they set the stage. These fresh shuhada are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses in Surah Ali Imran about وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Do not say of those who have been killed in the way of Allah that they are dead, rather they are alive with their Lord, rejoicing and being sustained. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ They are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them of His bounty. يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ قَلْبِهِمْ They are waiting for those who come after them. Allah خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ They have no fear nor shall they grieve. So the Sahaba who were crying over those that they had lost and every house in Medina was struck. They knew that their loved ones whose bodies are buried right in front of me are now in gardens with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bodies of green birds nestled and chandeliers from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sayyid of them, the master of them, is the one about whom the Prophet وسلم, wept the most, was seen weeping in a way that he'd never seen been weeping before. And that was Sayyid al-Shuhada Hamza radiallahu anhu, the leader of all Shuhada Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for their sacrifices. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join us with them. In the gardens of a few of those who have